in case I have to send this out to uh, a few of the people that have not uh, been able to get on this call. Um, but I do want to appreciate every single one of you get obviously hopping on this call. Um, so everyone's been killing it, right? Is anyone anyone uh, that's uh, negative? <laughs> sure. Yeah. Well, so as that's being said, it's only human nature that y you guys start to get inclined and start realizing, you know, the power of this, and then you start wanting to tell someone else. So uh, if you're sitting there and you're kind of saying, oh, I'm not going to tell anyone, well, I, I, I think it's human nature that you're going to want to tell someone. And we have to realize that, you know, this thing, this, this system, Debt Killer, is literally going to pay everyone out in this group, thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, and potentially some of you that are on this call, millions of dollars in the very, you know, next couple of years here. So the huge question you got to keep asking yourself is what are you really willing to do to uh, uh, ensure that you are going to be, you know, profitable to ensure that these returns are going to keep coming month after month, week after week after week. And that's really just keeping it under wraps really at, at this point in time. It's just that we have to keep this um, uh, under wraps. Uh, one second here. Um, thank you. No, who is that? Oh, it's James. Um, you just got to keep this thing under wraps. Don't be telling anyone. I know you guys may have family members. You may have someone that's in a tough position. You may have someone that you really, really, really want to help out. My suggestion in that is build up your account faster so then you can actually benefit, you know, you can toss them some money to toss in an account or whatever the benefit is in that. So, um, you know, I really just want to uh, get on this call. I'm going to go over some of the compliance stuff to make sure that, you know, we all are staying on track, making sure that, you know, we are keeping this uh, on the low. We're not, you know, telling the whole entire world about this at some point in time. Maybe we're going to be able to do that. Maybe when we have, you know, 20, 40, 50 million dollars, we'll be able to open up our own broker, make our own rules. And then at that point, we'll be able to share this out to everyone. But I just want to, you know, uh, you know, make sure that, you know, we are keeping this under wraps. We're not, you know, spilling the beans to anyone or anything like that. Build up your own guys' account. This is like literally the only thing that you is separating you from making the millions of dollars. So, um, I don't think it's too hard to ask for, but I do know that it is, you get an itch, right? You, you start seeing these results and you're like, man, 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 I want to, I want to tell this person, I want to touch this person. And I know some of you have already reached out to me, um, and, and, uh, I have kind of asked, but I would appreciate if you just kind of, I know you know the rules and you know, it's definitely worth, uh, you know, shooting me a message and kind of asking, but I, I just rather not be in that position where I feel like I'm the bad guy because, you know, you're coming to me with this and it's, you know, this type of situation. And then I kind of have to tell you, no, um, it kind of makes me feel like I'm the bad guy and not being able to, you know, bring on other people. So I just appreciate it. You know, uh, that, uh, we don't do that. Tom, you got your hand raised. You got a question or something. Yeah. I just wanted to comment on that, Jesse, because I know we talked about this over Facebook and I wasn't asking to share it with anybody, but we were just talking about like how important it is to keep it between us and, like I have absolutely no problem with that. And my mindset around it is like, dude, you could have kept this to yourself and not told anybody. And I'm just so grateful for the opportunity for you to share it with me. So like for me to, you know, break that trust with you and then do something that you asked me not to do to share it with other people, like, heck no, man. Like I'm just so thankful and grateful that you just shared it with, you know, the people that are in this group. So I personally for sure will stay you know, within that trust. And then I love your comment there too. If you want to like help someone out in need, just give them the money from your account, right? If you're making all this money, why not just help them out financially from your own account? So yeah, I just wanted to comment on that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Definitely. If anyone ever wants to uh, chime in or anything, definitely raise your hand or something. Um, yeah. So uh, it was kind of just really like the point there is, you know, Tom, uh, thanks. For, I appreciate you chiming in there and, uh, you know, saying that you're appreciative and stuff. Uh, you know, it's going to be a wild ride, guys, for, for us. <laughs> it really is. I think uh, a lot of us still kind of are waking up and pinching ourselves saying, wow, is this like, you know, this just happened again? Like one day. OK. You know, one week. One, OK. Um, and, and I've been doing this now. I've been using this system for over 170 days now. 
Um, so it's been close to, you know, just about a, yeah, half a year um, that this thing has been running and it's been working. Um, and the next thing I want to kind of touch on, boys, is uh, this upcoming week, we do have Brexit. Uh, we have the UK Parliament election on December 12th. Is there anyone in this chat that is still in open active trades um, from last week besides Steve? Nope. Nope. No one's, no one's in active nope. trades? Okay, good stuff. Good stuff. Um, yeah, so I was just going to... So for next week, this next upcoming week, there's two options for everyone here. Uh, you can either stay out the week, run your account on a demo, right? Put it on a demo of your similar account size with similar settings or aggressive settings and uh, run it through this week and see how it does. You know, you take a week off. Um, and then uh, the next thing would be do is to run three different currency pairs uh, you could do it for this week, maybe even for the remainder of the year that I have seen to be profitable. Um, they're still kind of going through this testing phase. I will be launching uh, these three currency pairs at the end of January to my entire team, Team Hope, and uh, hopefully be talking to the leaders and leadership, and hopefully I'll have enough data where they'll actually maybe push these currency pairs also for the entire group because I do see them being a lot more safe. Um, is there anyone here that uh, is interested in running these additional, these three different currency pairs um, next week or potentially for the rest of the year? Or, uh, you know, I think uh, we may be running Debt Killer just after this week. I don't think we're going to take Christmas week and um, Christmas week and New Year's off. So, all right, Xander. All right, you guys are interested. A bunch of you guys are interested in these new currency pairs. All right, let me go ahead and grab my mouse, and then uh, I can share my screen and show you what I got going on. Who's up over 100% yet? Is anyone up over 100%? Close. I'm on the new pairs. All right, all right. All right, let me go ahead and share my screen. Anyone have any questions or anything while I'm pulling this up? Questions on how Deck Killer is working, how it's taking trades, how it's performing, what you should do during certain times to get out of the markets. All the time, speak up. You guys can unmute yourself. You don't have to type in the chat. Hey, hey Jesse, there's just uh, something I want to. Uh, make sure I'm clear on because you know when we talk about level three trades or level two trades can you hear me, you guys hear me? yeah yeah you know like obviously level zero is going to be like the first level so sometimes it's hard to know exactly what, what you're talking about like what we're talking about you know if you say like level two is that like the second level or is that two levels because you know those two are different so um, I remember you saying once that you that the software it, it wouldn't be able to go into um four like open trades and you know in a single four sequence. levels yeah so when i'm talking about that yeah so when i'm talking about that is uh levels level four so you have level the first trade the first trade that is opened on trade ringer is level zero so the first trade is level zero the second level that gets placed in so after it moves 77 pips or whatever it is um then that's going to be level one so you could have four positions open right sometimes most most of the time it's going to be a double position um so you're going to have you know up to eight trades open 
and that would be the max that it could open until it hits the stop loss. So when it goes to open up level four, which is technically your fifth trade, um, then you are gonna hit your level zero stop losses and you're only gonna have in four levels. So you're only gonna always have in four. So when you go to open up the next level, which has never happened, um, and that's something I, I'm gonna dive into is how to really uh, take Trade Ringer, use Trade Ringer and Deck Killer to maximize profits with a little bit of micromanaging and uh, placing trades on uh, these high levels that, as of right now, have a 100% win rate. So, um, yeah, does that kind of clarify it? You know, the first the first trade that opens up. So when I say, hey, you know, is anyone in any level threes? Well, if you go ahead and you go to your, uh, you know, your terminal or something, um, you can right click down at the bottom and you can actually see the, the comments in the terminal or you can uh, click on the trades on your phone and it'll expand and you can actually see them there too. All right, good deal. That makes sense. You know how to do that, right? So have, yeah, yeah, well, no, I mean, I, I know all that. I just didn't, okay. you know, I wasn't yeah. certain on that. Um, so, so have you seen, does it happen a lot that you get four open trades? I don't know if I've seen that happen on my, on my it hasn't happened a lot here, but it definitely does happen. Um, let me go to here. All right. You can see my screen, right? Let's go to, uh, This is a little mixed up, but uh, GBP USD is the NZD. So the time in the past 120 days on this demo account, it's opened up a level three 18 times. So it definitely does happen, but it has never opened up a level four. So meaning it hasn't gone 77 pips past the level three entry. So if you enter in a level three, um, you got to think, you know, your first stop loss, so your first trade opens up at 77 pips, right? And plus another 77 is going to be your uh, level one. Then plus uh, the another 77, that's going to be your level two, right? So then when you go to open up your level three, it would hit your 250 stop loss. Isn't it 2.2? Your 2.2 is your position size multiplier. Oh, that's right. That's right. So that multiplies your okay. position. So yeah, we're going to see a lot more like once we get out of this Brexit stuff and the past like seven, eight, nine weeks or something, it's just been straight almost flatlining. It hasn't been much movement. So when we do start to uh, get more volatility coming through here, man, uh, yeah, we should start seeing level threes open up more. So if any of you are feeling uncomfortable with the amount of drawdown that you have seen on the level threes, uh, just, just kind of scale back your uh, lot size is pretty much my suggestion on that. Um, so yeah, so these new currency pairs that we're going to be running, uh, I do have, uh, I know Roy has an account that's been running uh, all of the currency pairs that I've been testing and they've been doing actually phenomenal on his account. Um, they're going to be uh, NZD USD, USD CAD, let's go this one, yeah, NZD USD, USD CAD, NZD Swiss, NZD CAD, and Swiss JPY. So you guys are gonna have a selection of uh, up to five to choose from, but the three that uh, I'm gonna be suggesting that you run are gonna be um, these three. So it's gonna be NZD, USD on a 15 minute time frame, USD CAD on a daily time frame with these settings. And I'll send this image out to the Deck Killers chat so you guys have it. And then uh, NZD Swiss um uh on the daily time frame these things have been actually been killing it nzd swiss i believe has like a 10 or like a nine profit factor or something like that let me go ahead and pull up uh this fx book so you guys can see how it's been performing on a larger account um altogether. and uh 
So these are a little bit different settings. You know, the thing with running different these different currency pairs is you're going to be obviously taking on a little more risk. I don't know what kind of percent they're doing by themselves every single week. So well, this is something that, you know, you're still like, you're going to just get your, you know, anywhere between three to 5% per week at this time um, with these currency pairs. Uh, uh, and that's, you know, it's not going to be, it's not like debt killer or anything where you're going to be able to get like 60% out of this thing. Um see here go to history. let me pull up this fx book um, all right so yeah this fx book started this account started with six hundred thousand uh, dollars it was about uh, 40 days ago we'll go ahead and go to symbol here um and yeah profit factor so nzd swiss in this time period of about 40 days has opened up you know 95 trades so it's still it's not trading you know a, a lot because you gotta think you know gbp nzd was did does about 100 trades a week um but the profit factor has been just killer it's at 3.23 profit factor we have an 83 percent win rate you know, so it's definitely been profitable. Uh, the next one was uh, NZD USD. Also, it's not taking a lot of trades, but um, it is still being profitable, right? 2.5 profit factors. Uh, I have a little smaller of a win rate on NZD USD. I do, do believe that's probably due to the 15 minute time frame. Um, normally, when I, you guys will have the decision, but uh, I would just stick probably to the daily time frames. Um, they seem to be working the best with these currency pairs and how they're behaving. Um, but yeah, man, I mean, these, 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 the, the pairs have been just absolutely killing it. I mean, this account has done, you know, it hit its 10% weekly goal the first two weeks. And then I had Roy uh, bump up that up and then it hit uh, the goal again. And then I told him, hey, turn off the weekly goal. Let's just run this thing all throughout the entire week and see how it's do doing. And, you know, to three weeks ago, it did 30%. Then we did 20%. And last week was a little slow. We only did 11%, but it's still been absolutely crushing it uh, with these pairs running. So um, I'm going to go ahead and send that through the chat. Those that want to select and use these currency pairs, you're more than welcome to use them. Uh, and then it's going to be up to you if you know you want to be using them for the rest of the year. I think that's going to be the safe thing to do is use these pairs for the rest of the remainder of the year. Um, as of right now, I am really leaning towards, unless someone else gives me some other insight, I'm kind of curious on what your guys' thoughts are maybe on running uh, this through uh, Christmas and New Year's. I know we were saying that, you know, we're going to take those two weeks off. Um, I talked with uh, Andrew Barnett and uh, a couple other professional traders, and they kind of told me, you know, hey, you know, it, you could still run it. Um, there's still going to be volatility. Uh, the only thing that you're going to have to, you know, know is that you're taking on a little more risk because, uh, you know, during these times at the end of the year, there have been some significant moves in the market that actually have happened, especially with this whole Brexit deal and the, the trade wars going on here. So um, is there anyone that's going to want to, uh, you know, uh, run debt killer through until the end of the year? Like what are, what are your guys' thoughts on running debt killer Christmas and New Year's? week don't be shy mo i know you you've been trading for some time i feel like, I feel like go ahead. Valuable. Um, maybe run it on a much smaller size um maybe run it on 10 percent of my usual balance just to gather the data and see how it reacts i mean i'd like to, but um i mean i guess you can always do that on a demo account but I mean, I'd be interested in running it on a smaller, much smaller balance. Okay. So you're saying running it on a, a smaller account, or you're saying just toning down your lot size to your account size? Like if you want to maybe do like 0.01, you know, per 2000 or something is what you're saying, right? No, a more smaller account and run the same settings. Okay. All right. Because I mean, the same, we, yeah. it has like the debt killer, the settings are designed to um you know profit on massive moves like one from brexit so yeah you know i feel like you'd, you'd get to level three there's a higher chance that you'd get to level three using or even level four um 
but yeah, I mean, that's, I think the data would be value to be, will be valuable for me to be able to just run it and see how it reacts. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, definitely going to be running it. Uh, uh, Wally, do you have something to add? I'm just going to say, uh, you're, you're more of the guru. So I follow what you say. Um, but we run it on 15 minute time frame. Maybe we can run it on like maybe an hour time frame or 30 minute. Maybe that is a difference. Yeah, there's definitely a difference on the daily time frame. You're not picking up all of the uh, amount of trades that you would be picking up on the 15 minute time frame. So you know how, uh, you know, on the 15 minute time frame, the reason why we're running on the 15 minute is because it, it starts to place, you know, once you start getting into stuck into a trend, it starts placing counter trades and starts, you know, that's where a lot of our money's made is all those little tiny wins. Um, all of like the five, 10, you know, 15 pip wins, those are really where all the money's coming in. So when you put it on the daily time frame, it just doesn't pick up uh, those, those counter trades uh, for you. So you're just kind of getting into the levels and that's pretty much it. It's not uh, um, doing the counter trades. So it is more conservative, yes, running it on a daily time frame. Um, anyone what else about, wanna, What yeah. about like a uh, one hour time frame? I haven't ran it on a one hour, haven't, haven't tested it. I wouldn't haven't see tested a point enough, in, I should say. Waleed, I wouldn't see a point in changing the time frame because all that would do is give you bad data i mean you're not you're never going to not run it on the 15 minute after brexit so i'd probably just stick with the 15 minute time frame if you're going to run it all together you, you said you experienced before 1300 pip move yeah i did so i can show you that um so that was this So obviously all of those little arrows are every single trade that was taken. This was Brexit. So Brexit came out, sent it in this first wave here. I took a, a loss here, right? So this spike here, I took a level zero and level one loss. And then I took a loss here. So it was this first spike. We had some consolidation, made some money back. And then in the second spike here, that's when I lost the second uh, amount. Um, and it really wasn't that much. I'll pull up the trades right now after this, uh, after you, uh, I'm done here. Um, and then that was it. That was the only time it, it, it hit a loss. And it just took a loss on the level zeros and level ones. Uh, I've never seen a level two lose. I've never seen a level three lose either. Um, I have seen a level two lose due to a cost average, uh, but I haven't seen it hit a stop loss yet. Uh, so that's been beneficial and then it made money. Yeah, it made money all in this consolidation zone This whole entire move to the upside here. It made money didn't lose anything during that time um, So if I come to this next uh, slide here uh, Just ignore uh, that top one. It was just this GBP NZD. You can see a level zero sell counter it lost a uh, hundred and seventy six dollars and then You come down here. This is where it took its um, second, uh, phase of losses, which was the level ones, right? So I lost 270 bucks on each one of those. And then that was it. Um, then it co if you come down to this next section, this was a huge cost average, right? A level three opened up and I won $247 and then took a few losses and that cost averaged out. And then I just had, that was it. Yeah. So we had the level zeros lose. Level ones lose here, and then we had the cost average happen on a 1300 pip move. So if you were putting this on, you know, 1.01 per $1,000 in your account, uh, you know, because I'm only running a point, you know, one one lot. I mean, you would have lost, you know, what 340 bucks. So what, like 800, 900 dollars. So you would have lost, you know, we'll just round it up a thousand dollars on a 10K account if you're running 0 0.01 per $1,000 in your account during that huge move. So it's, that's kind of what I was thinking, Mo, is like, you know, the chances are we really probably going to see another 1300 pit move during Christmas and New Year's. I, I don't think it's going to, I don't think that's going to be uh, happening, but. Well, I mean, looking at the, like, just the channel that GBP NZD is, if the vote went the opposite way, it would be an easy move down from $1.99 down to like $1.85. But I mean, if it went, if the vote was for 
the price to continue going up, I don't see it going up much more just because it's at the top of the channel. If you're looking at it from like a daily chart. Let's see here. Um, yeah, so that was just, so you're just saying, you're just talking about during Brexit, right? Yeah, yeah, I mean, I'm just trying to think that yeah. for it to be able to just continue going, to just break this channel that it's in and go continue going up past two dollars and two cents yeah i mean it's it's hit the resistance right here i mean the chances everything that i'm looking at technically is telling me that you know the new zealand dollar is strengthening and this is going to continue to the downside um and like you kind of like saying i mean we're kind of been in this channel here uh so you're saying yeah i mean it would have to break through this major level of this is a monthly support or monthly resistance line here um at the two dollars and you know just over two dollars here um and it didn't break through that um so i mean we're kind of just in this wedge and this is kind of where it's going to play out this week and then you know either we're going to see that breakout to the upside or break to the downside back to this 200 ema here um but if i pull up my XK here, go to this. You see my screen now? Yeah. Yes. So a huge thing for me for GBPNZD was this weekly cross. So this is just a simple uh, line cross here, absolute strength histogram. And when this red line is on top and crosses to the downside, uh, that's uh, an indication that it's gonna be a bearish trend and vice versa when the blue line's on top and crosses to the downside, um, that's gonna indicate a, a, a bullish trend. So this is a weekly time frame. When I get these weekly crosses, I've never seen one of these like I personally have never seen it, you know, uh reverse like right here in the very on the very left. That would have been a quick reversal real real quick. Um, but normally when we get these weekly crosses, the trend stays good for weeks and weeks on end. So this was a huge reason why I always keep telling everyone, like, hey, you know, it's gonna be going to be bearish going to be bearish going to be bearish so i do see you know we're probably going to be pushing further but i think it's all depending on that news um so i think yeah i think the best best thing to do is let's you know play this week out let's not run gbp nzd you know the euro pairs are going to be uh very very volatile also um and then i think after this week we just get back to it i mean we're, we'll assess the situation how Brexit, uh, you know, came out, how the markets actually moved. If we still think that there's going to be a major impulsive move coming the following week, uh, then we can just dial it back. But uh, I think, you know, moving forward after this Brexit, I think we're going to be good in the clear to uh, continue running debt killer for, you know, the remainder of the year and then into next year. Um, and then just everyone know, you know, if you want to take, you know, don't want to take on, you know, that additional risk, just don't do it. Uh, run it on a demo. Don't, I would definitely don't suggest running a live account this week um, coming up. But if you are learning a live account, run it on these additional currency pairs, see how those perform for you. And then uh, if you don't just run deck killer on a demo, set that, set it up and then uh, keep us posted on how that is uh, actually performing. But uh, that was kind of my insight on the GBP NZD. Um, I do do see this kind of trending more so to the downside, but we'll kind of see on that news on how that all plays out for sure. Um, trying to think what else I want to go over with you guys. Uh, can't come. I don't have enough experience. Okay. I thought about it because Brexit news. Um, so the, 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 the quick question, the new parents, yeah. um, I mean, how long have we been testing those new pairs in the new settings? So I've been testing the new pairs uh, with the settings that I showed you for the same time that I've been testing Debt Killer. Um, they just been been testing on one large account. So you know, all the pairs have been tested on one account, and then um, I can send. Uh, I'll send it out right now. I'm gonna grab that FX Blue link, and then I'll send this 
to the debt killer chat and you guys can check this account on. So this account's been running what uh, I found to believe are the best seven currency pairs to run. Um, and then uh, it's kind of like, you know, been uh, kind of trying to narrow it down from there and seeing, you know, which ones were going to be the best to run and which ones weren't. Um, so yeah, they do have, they do have testing, but it's just not done on individual accounts. So I don't know, like if we run three, three of these currency pairs, are you going to hit 2% a week? Are you going to hit 5% every week? That's the thing that I, I don't know. And then a quick question. Did, um, did you by any chance run those USD pairs when, uh, Trump tweeted? About yes. You did? Okay. Yep. Yeah, the, the pairs have been running um, for the past, you know, 50 days nonstop on that one account I showed you and the past 120 days on a different account. Um, uh, and they've been running it nonstop through NFTs, through, through everything. Okay. Yeah, this week was actually, I think it's, I think it's in a little bit of drawdown. I think it maybe took a... Maybe to, I think I know I took a hit on the G, GBP NZD because whoever held trades over on the weekend uh, got stuck in that trend and hit their level zeros. But uh, I know two accounts that um, hit their level zeros still came out the week profitable. Is there someone that didn't come out the week profitable? Yeah, I think everyone came out profitable. It's like that's just nuts to me. It's just oh, what was my mind? Crazy. Awesome, awesome. You guys have any more questions or anything like that, or just really want to get on here? Uh, make sure that you know we're, everyone's keeping their lips sealed for as long as possible. Uh, making sure that we all are on KOT for X. Uh, you know, there was uh, I'm talking to uh, you know almost every one of you. You you know um, why we're using KOT for X. You know, there's obviously there's benefits in it. Uh, there's lower commission, tighter spreads. Um, you know, if anything is going wrong with any of our accounts, we have, you know, contact with one of the owners. We can get that those problems solved, um, you know, a lot faster than you would with any other broker. And then uh, for some of you, I don't think anyone's on this call, maybe with someone else. Uh, make sure that you guys are running gbpnzd.pro. Uh, the pro pair offers uh, a tighter spread. I think the normal normal currency pair is like 0.8 for spread and uh, the pro pairs are point Four, so it's literally half. Um, so it definitely makes up a little bit of your the difference in, in, in trading. Uh, I took a level one SL and ended the week with a four percent gain. Awesome, Henry. Love hearing that. Love hearing that. Um, oh, how to micromanage while using deck killer when it's in certain levels? Yeah. So when it's in certain levels, that was. Uh, um, Raise your hand. Who's raising the hand? Clint, you have a question? Go for it. You're on, you're on mute. Oh, one sec. There you go. I unmuted you. Cool. I'm thinking about uh, opening an account. At, well, I have an account, but I'm thinking about using it at LCM as well, just to kind of diversify and have, hold both. What do you think? Thoughts? Um, just thinking. I if personally, any, if any, if any, I'm... Yeah, I'm personally diversifying at a million dollars. Once uh, the million dollar mark is reached, then that's when I'm looking to start really diversifying uh, to different brokers. Because at that point, you're making, you know, if you're making 10%, you're making, you know, $100,000 a week. I can pull out weekly profits at that point and get in an account, um, you know, up to a million dollars in no time. I mean, it's going to be, you know, I could take five weeks straight of profit, put it into another broker, and then that's going to just compound so much faster. So for me personally, all my eggs are kind of in the one basket as of right now um, until I build up to that million dollar mark. And then at that point, you know, we are, you know, LCMFX, I haven't seen too many issues as of right now uh, running a deck killer. Uh, so that I don't have an issue with, but like Clint, you've experienced, we are testing other brokers and we'll be setting up, you know, a same system as we have with KOT Forex. Um, I'll be setting up, you know, my link and stuff and we'll be uh, doing the same thing. So my idea is once 
you know, if people start reaching that million dollar mark, we're about to have someone, you know, someone's already over a million dollars. We have another guy just about to approach a million dollars. Um, there's another guy with a million dollars coming on. So if we got a couple of these guys with a million bucks at that point. Then we're going to, I would say we're going to start moving over to different brokers altogether is my, uh, my take on it. Um, you guys are obviously, you know, if you, if you, I don't have a gun to your head. So if you're going to go fund another account and tell someone or whatever, obviously, you know, it's going to be up to you, but that's what I'm personally doing. Okay. So kind of stick in the pack and we kind of move as a group kind of yeah. idea. That's cool. Yeah. I'm cool with that. Okay. Uh, Tom, you have a question? Is your hand still uh, raised from earlier? No, I just forgot to put it back down, bro. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, yeah, so micromanaging of a uh, deck killer, you know, um, it's, uh, Quentin, you got another question? Nope. Oh, okay. Um, micromanaging of deck killer. So, yeah, so level threes. When a level three opens up, uh, you know, so managing, how am I going to dive into this? Um, you have to know XK, unless, you know, that's what I'm using. XK is my manual trading strategy for some of you that uh, are not aware. I have put together my own kind of my own algorithm and my own strategy uh, called XK based on a few indicators. I do, you know, require you if you haven't done any trading to go through baby pips before I even sit down with you that on that. But uh, there are some ex more experienced traders here that would be willing to, you know, sit down and show XK and show how I'm more so, you know, uh, micromanaging a deck killer. But um, some examples, and I don't encourage doing this, you know, right off the bat. Like if you if you've just been trained for a couple months or something like that, if you cannot consistently win right now, you are way better off letting deck killer do its own thing and not even mess with it. So the stuff that I'm about to tell all of you right now doesn't mean Go out and, you know, just do it willy nilly, um, really test it on a demo, make sure you're getting to that point because some of the stuff that I do could really screw up your account. Um, but there's instances where I will be able to see, let me share my screen again. Um, we'll go to the daily time frame. Or we'll go to the 15, four hour. All right. So on the four hour time frame here, right, if we kind of zoom out, um, we're always just bouncing back and forth between this B bands, right? At the bottom of the B bands, to the top of the B bands, to the bottom of the B bands, to the top of the B bands, to the bottom of the B bands. It's just moving in this zigzag wave. GBP NZD is very predictable. Like when you start like really pulling this thing out and looking at it, you know, top of the B bands to the bottom, to the top, to the bottom. It's just going in a zigzag. So all I'm doing is when I when I notice that it is, you know, at the top of the B bands here, right? And I get the confirmations that it's going to head down the other way. If Trade Ringer were to have open positions up in here um, for 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 uh, sells, what I could initially do is turn off Trade Ringer, right? Make sure it's not picking up buys as the market moves down, because if I think it's going to be an aggressive move, turn off Trade Ringer. And what it's going to do is the market's then going to trend down. And then when it gets to a certain point, I can close out my trades for more profit than what Trade Ringer would be able to give me. Um, so that's something that I actually did this week. Uh, we saw that uh, aggressive move to, to the upside, um, which was, yeah, right here. We saw this, right? We saw this move. It was, we came down, then we pushed up, and then we pushed up again. I had in, I had in cells, like at the very top here. I'm like, Looking on the four hour time frame, I'm like, man, this thing is going down. Like I know on the weekly time frame, daily time frame, everything's telling me this thing's going down. So I just turned off Trade Ringer and had massive lots opened up here for sales and uh, cashed out um, down here. And it didn't actually pick up those buys. So I didn't actually encounter a lot more drawdown. Another thing that you could be doing is um, when Trade Ringer kind of gets into uh, profit, right? So say... Uh, you know, it opened up this cell right here, right? Um, it opened up this cell and then next thing you know, it started pushing, uh, that's not, uh, I'll say here, uh, right here. So it opened up that cell here, right? The cell went into profit and then maybe I got an indicator or, or an indication that the trend was going to reverse, right? And come back up to this entry point. 
you've seen it. A lot of you have seen it a lot of times. This is this is not this is very hard to do, and I don't do it very often. But what you can do is you can essentially just close out the trade and profit, and Trade Ringer will open up a new level as soon as you know it, it goes down and then retrace it back to the upside. It's going to reopen up that level, so you could start closing out trades a little earlier. And these only can be done with higher levels. So your level twos and uh, your level ones and level twos and level threes really are the ones that you can do this with. Um, but I find it quite, it's, it's difficult because you have to be very, like if you mess up and close a trade early and then the trend starts to go back in your favor and you never opened up that trade that was supposed to cost average you out of a trend, you can start getting stuck in the trends very easily very easily and you may then see a level four open up if you keep doing that. Um, so if you're closing out trades early, they could mess up with the cost averaging. That's why I don't really do it. And you have to ensure that, you know, um, it's going to be opening up that position back up again. And then same thing with level threes. We had uh, a level three actually open up on um, GBP USD. Uh, and uh, it's not on here, but on my different account, um, it opened up a level three on GU and level threes have never lost. So if I know a level three has never lost, right. And the level three is already in 30 pips drawdown, right. Um, what I could do is what I could do is place a monster manual cell, right. At the level three and put my take profit and my stop loss, the same thing as trade ringer has, right. Uh, and that's that's pretty much in, in the sum of the terms. That's kind of like it. So it opens up a level three. You, you the chances of your level three hitting its take profit are monster right now. There's a hundred percent chance. I've literally looked at every single trade it's taken. I mean, there's over like nine hundred different trades, um, and it's never lost. So, but with that being said, you know you just have to make sure you can handle the amount of drawdown. And unfortunately, when you are opening up a level three you're in the most drawdown on your account. So it's not like you can like maybe place a monster of a trade because you're in a lot of drawdown at that time. Um, I am personally leaving TR to do its thing in a separate account and I'm gonna do sort of, yeah. Yeah, Henry, it's best to do that kind of stuff like on a separate account. Um, you know, let the, really, I would say like the best thing for a lot of people here is don't be messing with Trade Ringer. I know a lot of you guys' experience. Don't be messing with Trade Ringer. Maybe if you want to start picking up the level twos and level three trades on a separate demo account if you want, or if you have risk capital and you want to put in, you know, uh, a little bit of risk on these level like threes that open up. But we're going to start seeing more level threes open up. And if we have a 100% win rate, you bet your ass I'm placing down monster Lambo lots and cashing in big on 30, 50 pip wins um, when that time does come around. So. When you turn off Trade Ringer, did you also manually uh, amend the TP? Yes, Andy. When I do turn off Trade Ringer, so it like you know it was all the way up. Um, I turned off Trade Ringer and then I adjusted all the take profits to where I wanted them to uh, take profit. And then if for some reason I wanted to, uh, the, the beautiful on that, the beautiful thing on that is, you know, say. You know, I adjust all the take profits. I turn off trade winger, adjust all the take profits, and then I see something in my analysis that tells me, hey, you know, it's not going in my favor. It's going to open up a new level or some sort. I can just turn on auto trading, and it's automatically going to readjust all my take profits, all my stop losses again hmm. back to where they were, and they're still going to manage your trades. So if you decided for some reason that you're not going to, you know, follow through with managing or say, hey, you know, I don't have, you know, the time now to manage my current trades, just turn back on auto trading. It'll modify everything for you again, and it'll keep managing those trades. So that's the beautiful thing on it is if you kind of like a little fucked up, then you just turn back on trading and it'll get you out more than likely. <laughs> um, thoughts on running a lower lot size than just cloning level two and three trades. Um, yeah, I mean, you could. Yeah. Hmm. But I, I mean, I, would personally just have like a different account open. I, I mean, if you want to, you, when you're saying that, Clint, for me, it's like you just want to more so focus on manual trading. Um, and that, that's okay. Uh, I think it's just going to be more profitable um, if you just uh, left the same lot size and then maybe just started up a different account hmm. and did, did the manual trading on that way. Makes total sense. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
Yeah, thought about another live account. Yeah, you could just definitely, you could all create just another live account right through KOT, internal account, and then you can set that up, you know, start with a demo, start taking some of these trades, you know, on a demo account, see how they play out, get comfortable. And then once you do feel that to that point where you are comfortable enough, um, you know, then start running it on a live. That's what I would suggest. Hmm. So any other questions or anything else you guys had uh, to ask? Any clarification on anything? You guys kind of understand the cost averaging and uh, how uh, I do a little bit of the micromanaging now. So if you do want to, you know, learn a bit about XK, how I'm, you know, uh, using it and how I'm enter entering into some of these trades, just shoot me a message. We'll set, set up a separate Zoom call and then I'll walk, uh, walk you through um, all of that. Uh, Yeah, definitely, man. We got to get on a call. I know that uh, we've been meaning to do it for like a week or so. Um, all right. Awesome, guys. Well, as of right now, for you that want to run the three new currency pairs, I'm going to send the settings and the deck killer. And then you have access to that FX uh, blue book. Um, so you can look at that to check out some of the data that uh, has been recorded so far. And then we'll run this for this week. We'll see how Debt Killer, you know, performs this week. And if it absolutely crushes it and we see some monster moves and it still crushes it, um, I'm going to be more confident running, running through the Christmas and the New Year's. But as of right now, I'm going to be, and I think we all should be running uh, uh, through, through, through that event. What do I want for Christmas? I actually have Bitcoin, man. I got a Bitcoin address. <laughs> no, uh, I think, uh, is he here? Is he here? Oh, no, Russell. Russell actually already sent me some stuff. This guy's sponsored by Nike. Sends me a bunch of Nike gear. I'm like, heck yeah, man. I'll take some of that. Uh, yeah. um, so you're definitely running a demo on a demo Brexit for this week? Yep, I'm going to be running a conservative, a moderate, an aggressive, and uh, maybe maybe a gamble, gambling setting. Uh, gambling would be a point zero one per one hundred dollars in your account. Okay, and then uh, cool, man. I'm having a tough time trying to figure out what I want to run this week. It, it, you know, looking at the news for this for the um, for the options for this week, it seems like. Seems like what? Based off of like what news is coming up next week, it seems like New Zealand dollar and the Swiss are the best ones to run this week. Is that what you're saying? As a replacement? So there's so there's you're saying there's a lot of high impacting uh, Swiss franc and NZD news. No, 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 no. That's, oh, that's oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Those yeah, those are those are two of the currencies that we would be running. Yeah. Yeah, and they're they're gonna be used. They're using uh these settings are pretty much geared the same way. What I'm wanted to do is develop settings and pairs that you had to do little to no management on. Like with 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 GBP NZD, there's not really any management we have to do. You can literally run that thing all week, and you're you're gonna make money in the long run, regardless of you know what is going on. Even through these events, yeah, you may lose a week, you may lose you know a day or something, but you're gonna be uh, profitable in the long run. What I wanted to do with these new pairs. Um, and hopefully I'll be able to, like I said earlier, be able to release these out once we get the data to these new people so we can get people off of Euro, USD, and USD, JPY, because I don't believe those are the best pairs to run. Um, so with these settings of using a level range of 33, um, you're not opening up trades as often, so you're able to survive bigger moves. But it, what I found, it doesn't really eat up into your profit that much because if you're not closing trades as often, um, they actually have to move further. So each trade that closes out is actually bigger than where you were closing out, you know, every trade at, you know, level 21 or whatever. Um, your your profits are actually a little bit bigger. So using, I use a level range of 33 on them um, and the position size multiplier 2.2 on just the two currency pairs are because they have such a high win rate and, and uh, they don't pick up as many trades. You know, they'll pick up maybe like, you know, five, like 10 to 15 maybe trades a week 
Um, uh, so they're not picking up massive amounts of trades. So yeah, I wanted to just develop, you know, settings that you didn't have to, you know, really uh, you know, make sure you get it out on Wednesday. It's just kind of like, you know, the, the best settings that could be just a set it and forget it type deal. So these are uh, the settings that I came up with. Yeah, what's up, Clint? Just curious. Uh, so I'm looking at the FX blue chart at the that you shared. Yeah. And I'm just looking at the highest profit factor for some of the other currencies. And there's three or four of the ones that are at the highest that aren't listed as the three so i'm just curious why you excluded them obviously i know you had your reasons i'm just curious what they were yeah you guys can choose between the five um the reason why i chose those is uh <clears throat> because they have not necessarily the best profit factor but the stats all around you know um there's quite a few things that go into factors you know how many trades is it picking up per week um you know how much money it's actually making a week uh, the profit factor takes into account the win percent is being taken into con uh, account. You know the average win, how big is the average win that's being taken into uh, account also. So there's there's a few more cool. stats that I'm taking into con into consideration when I'm choosing those three currency pairs. But um, yeah, you guys will. I mean, those are the five. Uh, I'll send that out, and you know those are the five, and you could choose any. You know, you could run all five. I mean, you're just going to have to, you know, tone down the lot size. I think for, for quite a few of you guys here, um, fortunately, you guys all have decent size accounts. So the, the only downfall of running, you know, five or seven different currency pairs was you need like a twenty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 account to run, run that setup um, without, you know, risking your entire account. Even on, you know, a $10,000 account, running five currency pairs is pretty risky. Um, so... Mm -hmm. You can choose any of the th any of the three out of those five. Uh, it's just those are the three that I chose uh, to 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 run together. I think it's going to be kind of a testing phase, Clint. And well, maybe maybe yeah. those three pairs that I chose, you know, uh, aren't the best pairs to you know best combinations. Maybe maybe it's a different three out of those five. Um, so. Yeah. Well, this is going to be a little testing uh, on that. Um, when economy is going to out with the future, where you have to manually accept trades. Yeah. So when economy comes out with that feature, there will be a workaround. Um, I was told it's going to be pretty easy. So I don't know exactly what's going to happen or when it's going to happen. But when economy does release that feature with everyone in the United States has to approve every single level zero trade, essentially worst case scenario, um, you open up a new account and you give your new account the address of somewhere outside the U.S. So if you're making commissions, obviously you have to keep your account, you know, uh, with your address because you're filing for taxes on the commissions and stuff that you're getting paid. Um, but there's no one telling you that you can't just go purchase a new account and put, put, you know, put uh, a Canada address or some of you guys are in Canada <laughs> where, you know, some, some, putting, putting it somewhere else, putting it somewhere else. So then I'm pretty sure that's how it's going to be tied in is your account is whatever address, whatever country is on your account in your back office is how they're going to be able to track it. So I'm not, I'm not worried at all. There's going to be a workaround for sure on that. Cool. Mm. Cool. Cool. All right, guys. Well, I think that's about it. Uh, let's kill it in the markets. Let's uh, keep our lips shut. Let's all become millionaires. And then uh, in the new future, you know, when we got the 20 or 50 million, we'll, we'll open up our own broker and we'll fucking take the world by storm. <laughs> nice. Thanks a lot, Jesse. Really appreciate it. You're welcome, Roy. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Jesse. Hey, Jesse. Yeah, thank you, Thanks for you time, Jesse, for everything. You're welcome. What's up, Ma? Are you going to post the uh, pictures of the settings and stuff? Oh, yeah. Yeah, let me do that right now. Yeah. Um, let's see here. Also, for everyone, I'd, I'd be interested to see what you guys decide on if you want to post. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, if anyone is deciding to do uh, – yeah, like if you decide today or something, just post up what you're doing saying, hey, I'm going to run a demo on Deck Killer. I'm staying off for the week. Hey, I'm going to run these three currency pairs uh, for the week. Um, and then that way, everyone kind of knows what everyone's kind of doing, stay up to date. Oh, uh, the last thing I wanted to say before we leave is kind of like the chat and stuff for Deck Killer. I love getting to know everyone, but um, 
you know, it's, I don't need it. I don't think we all need an update every time it takes like a new level or every time, you know, the market moves 10 tips one way. Um, the, the information is supposed to just, you know, I, so I know stuff like I have all day, I'll, I'll read all the content and, and debt killer, but some people that have full-time jobs still in a life and stuff, we're trying to stay, you know, <laughs> They want to read only the most important stuff. And I know there's people that are probably on this call that just go like this. Oh, 30 messages. I'm not going to read anything. And then there could be like one message in there that could be really important that they just skip over. So if we could just uh, kind of minimize uh, not like all the chit chat, you know, I, we're getting to know each other and stuff, but um, some of that unnecessary chit chat uh, would be great. So then everyone would just get into that debt killer and just get the most important updates. Uh, those poor yeah, I got guys. off work to 102 Telegram messages last night. Yeah, yeah, it's like <laughs> <laughs> some of the stuff can be discussed in fire. That's all. That's all. Um, I I love it though. All right, we are quitting our jobs next year. Uh, Andy, I already quit my job. I don't know about you, so <laughs> I think I think Clint quit his too. I think Clint's just literally going to be a nomad for the next year. I literally sold uh, everything I own except clothes, put them in storage, and I leave in four days, one-way ticket to Columbia for probably about a year, just travel around. So, yeah, I highly recommend quit your job. <laughs> <laughs> Pay off the debt and get out. Yeah, totally. Time to time to tour. Thanks to Jesse. All right, yeah. Yeah. All right guys. You take care. Thanks, Jesse. Cool. As always, Thank you so much. trades be Thanks, with you. Take care. All right, guys. thanks, Jesse. All right, fellas. Thanks again, Jesse. Thank You're welcome. You